Hello everyone and welcome to my webcast. My name is Manfred Hick and I'm responsible for the business development in the slippering division here at Kübler. Today I will explain the most important parameters that influence the design of a slippering in general and give a further insight into the various technologies that are used in our slipperings and in which combination they are occur. Main parameters for the determination of a slip ring are the electrically operating parameters. These define the minimum size of a slip ring. As a rule of thumb, it can be said that the voltage drives mostly length and diameter, whereas the current primarily drives only the diameter of a slip ring. The physical circumstances at mounting site mostly given by the customer define the mechanical interface, such as maximum space availability within the machine, connection request of the customer if shaft or flange mounted, and some more. Here is a first rough overview of our transmission technologies. Details about it will follow later in this excurse. For load, we usually use silver graphite versus a brass ring or silver brushes against silver plated rings. The later one, silver brush against silver ring, is also used for signals and data. On smaller slip rings, we parallel use silver carbon against silver ring also for signals and data. On top, gold wire technology has still its field of application in smaller slip rings. Beside the right selection to safeguard electrical transmission, there are a few other parameters to have an eye on. The transmission technology of slip rings as a whole is significantly influenced by their mechanical and electrical parameters. Mechanically, it is of great importance to maintain a high grade of precision in manufacturing, careful assembly and proper mounting at site. And finally, help following maintenance procedures to ensure a long and trouble-free service life. Further, the operational and environmental conditions such as Operating speed, moisture, temperature, humidity and others also influence the design of slip rings. In close contact with our customers, we design the right layout, determine the IP protection class and discuss the choice of material. As a special service, we advise on handling and maintenance or give hints on cable routing and the like. After this brief explanation of the typical combinations based on slippering sizes, I will go a little bit more in detail on the individual technologies in the following slides. Gold coatings are widely used in static connection technology. With slip rings, this type of electroplating is only one method of ensuring reliable signal transmission. Nevertheless, I would like to go into a little more detail. It is usually a gold-plated spring-type wire or a pure gold wire that runs on a gold-plated ring with a V-guide groove. This technology is suitable for low-speed application and offers the possibility 
for a quite narrow axial arrangement. Eventually, it leads to shorter slip rings. The electrical values of gold gold are on similar level to those of silver technology. But when it comes to service life, gold gold cannot keep up and is therefore more likely to be used for slow rotating slip rings. For economic reason, its possible use is further reduced the larger the slip rings become. The simplest combination is a spring-loaded silver graphite block that runs on a brass ring. This combination is often used for power transmission and sometimes for unsensitive analog signals such as 4 to 20 mA or 0 to 10 V. It is perfectly suitable to activate electric valves or similar actors and serves as auxiliary power supply for motor controllers. In the next foil, I display a real power slip ring for high current up to 150 ampere and voltage up to 1000 volt. Its ring is massive brass and the transmission blocks are made of a copper graphite compound. All the silver or copper based combinations described so far are designed for robust use and long service life. As already mentioned, I'm now coming to the combination of silver against silver. Out of two possibilities, we firstly see a similar arrangement as with silver against brass, with the difference that the brass ring is now plated with a layer of hard silver on its operational surface. In comparison to a pure brass ring, the silver plating enables the suitability to transmit signals and field bus data up to 100 Mbit per second in contacting mode. Under circumstances, even 1 Gigabit per second is possible. The huge customer advantage is that there are no electronics necessary to modulate the signal before or after transmission. It goes over the slip ring like over a common stationary network connector. And accordingly, the transmission protocol is in no way influenced by the slip ring. We see another version of silver silver technology, which is more used in bigger slip rings. The brush is made of a bundle of single silver wires spreading up when touching the silver coated ring. With this technology, we receive instantly multiple contact points and secure a very stable and robust contact technology. The contact pressure is minimized and therefore we receive a big lifespan. In many cases, the slip ring competes with the lifetime of the machine. The produced via debris can be neglected. For our so-called pancake slip rings, we use a completely different technology. These slip rings build their transmission lines not axial but radial, like the rings of Saturn. Vice versa, the axial span is quite narrow and these slip rings are very much qualified for dynamic systems where the whole slip ring itself is spinning. Typical application for this type are grippers on pick and place machines or arm end tools in robotic. Its brush is a banded spring type metal strip with an arrangement of fine gold wires at its touching end. The technology suits perfect to the signal transmission and with certain precautions, field buses work perfectly. Finally, I come to our contactless transmission technologies. 
whereas in all before mentioned variations, the transmission is leading via contacting elements. In these, the transmission is completely contactless. As a result, both systems qualify for maximum speed and show no wear and tear at all. Firstly, we see our contactless capacitive transmission module designed for nearly all common field bus systems, up to 1 gigabit per second. And secondly, our fiber optical transmitter for multi and single mode transmission. Due to its non-contacting nature, both are, of course, not qualified for power transmission. In my last slide for today, I summarize the technologies described above in a table for a better overview. On the left side are the different combinations versus the suitability for the different transmission tasks. Of course, we have a great overlap in this table, but the selection of the best possible and most economical solution for your application is the core competence of our specialists in design and development. So, now I hope that I was able to bring you a little closer to the common technologies for the transmission of loads, signals and data and I look forward to your feedback. We would be happy to develop the right solution also for you without losing sight on economic matters. As you know, we can do a lot, but in the end it has to serve you. Goodbye and stay safe.